Hello patrons. It's raining unfortunately, but we are about to go over the Mississippi River. Welcome to Illinois, my phone just said. This is not exactly what I had planned, but look at that big old muddy river there. Oh man. It's huge. We're on a old metal bridge. <laughs> and we were hoping to time this around the rain, but it didn't work out. I didn't realize we were here already. Oh. Here's the welcome to Illinois sign. Even though the GPS lady has already told me. We made it. Over the bridge. I don't like this rain, babe. It's not it's alright. It's scaring me. Rain is a good thing. Rain is a good thing, but driving in this rain, I am not used to, so I'm a little nervous. It's raining really hard. Serious rain. Alright, I think this is the right exit. So we are now entering the historic town of Cairo, which is right in between the Ohio and Mississippi River. Coming, going through this little town. We're going down here to Fort Defiance Park. Hello goat lovers, Crystal and Derek here with Blue Cactus Dairy Goats and we are standing at the confluence of the Ohio River and the Mississippi River and right behind me is where the Ohio goes into the Mississippi and it is cool. So Crystal is standing there at the, the furthest most point and this is the Ohio River and it is dumping into the muddy, mighty Mississippi. And how neat is that? How much water, right? You can see the, hopefully you can see in the current of the Mississippi there. If I zoom in on some debris, see like the driftwood drifting down there? That's awesome. It's really got some speed to it. There's been some big fish flopping all around. There's lots of, smells like fish. There's like dead fish all along everywhere. This is We're, crazy. You can actually see it joining yeah. right here. You can see the current going this way and then hitting up with the Mississippi. Yeah, you, you can, yeah. Going in, that is really cool. You can see it's like the, like the muddy difference. Yeah. Like the Ohio looks a little cleaner, doesn't it? What a neat place. This wasn't really on the bucket list. This was just kind of an added bonus when I was looking at the maps and figuring out which way to go. Fishies. A big fish flop right there. Oh, can you see him? I can't see him, no. No? Pretty neat. I don't know if all these barges set here all the time. Or if this is because they're not letting anybody under the I, or, under or over the I-40 bridge down in Memphis. But yeah, they're... Uh-huh. Moving that freight up and down the river. Just neat. I bet it's beautiful when it's not raining and cloudy like this. Uh-huh. Boats moving and... Cool. That was the plan to be here when it was nice, but I forgot that it rains everywhere else, just not all in Arizona the all the time. But pretty neat. Oh, there's that fish again. It's uh, what's left of some sort of map. Proceeding on in November 1803, Meriwether Lewis and William Clark and their growing contingents of the corps of the Corps of Discovery men spent five days here teaching each other's celestial navigation and surveying skills. 
Using a sextant, octant, artificial horizon, and reference tables, they successfully obtained their first longitude and latitude data that would that they would be using that they would use during the expedition. Subsequent maps of the northern and western portions of the United States prepared using Lewis and Clark's data began at, began at the confluence of these two great rivers in 1803 which was located just south of 2nd Street in present day Cairo. That means it's moved. The sculpture proceeding on was designed and fabricated by Everett Builder Art and Design Graduate School Southern Illinois to and installed 2005 to commemorate Lewis and Clark's activities at this place. Library of Congress, blah, 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 blah. But I mean, they're talking about this sculpture right here, which looks like a big sundial or compass or something, but pretty neat. Can't really back up and get a better view of it. There you go, I'll give you some contrast. There's there's my wife under there, so. That there uh, directs the way, proceeding on. Proud Mary, keep on going, but it's rolling, rolling, rolling down the river. Just killed me a skater. Never stop. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's a placard. And now I will read it to you. The meeting of the rivers, long known to the Indian who used the two great rivers as his highways for trade and war. This junction of the Ohio and the Mississippi was first sighted by Europeans when Marquette and Joliet glided past in 1673. Ten years later, La Salle explored the area and established France's claim to the Mississippi Valley. From that time on, the confluence was recognized as a strategic site for settlement and fortification. George Rogers Clark, following the capture of uh, Kaskia in 1778, stationed armed boats at this junction to guard against attacks on the Illinois country by the British or the Spanish. Here in 1811, the New Orleans for the first steamboat to navigate western waters lay at anchor during three nights of the New Madrid earthquake in April of 1861. In April 1861, Fort Defiance was established at the confluence to thwart Confederate invasion and blockade the trade of the South. From here was launched General Grant's great flanking movement up the Cumberland and Tennessee rivers, which began at Fort Henry and ended in Vicksburg, giving the Union complete control of the Mississippi. Well, there you go. Fort Defiance was a few different things. Pretty neat. Exactly. You can tell how powerful that thing is by the waves it's pushing out. Right. By the wake. And that's going upriver against the current and all that. So cool. Well, that was really neat. Yes, we're about to go over this big bridge right here. And then I think we might be in Kentucky on the other side of that. I took a job in the city, pouring concrete in a hundred degree. Every single morning and every evening I had to make sure the goats had something to eat. Blue Ford keep on going. Blue cactus keep on growing. Rolling, rolling, rolling across the river. That's neat, huh? That is neat. Yikes. Yes. This is a little 
stretch. Oh my goodness. Welcome to Kentucky. There she be. Unbridled spirit. These trees on this road look awesome. They do, everything's wet. Pretty. Well, thank you for showing me that, babe. You're welcome. That was awesome. Yep. And it's raining again. I told you we had a little bit of a window. All right. Now the window is closed. Well, I'm glad we made it in the window. This rest stop looks like uh, you like, need an invite. Yeah. It's like, like a rich person's mansion. Like I'm not sure what's happening. Yeah. It's a house or something. It's like an old colonial Victorian house. I mean, like looking in there through the windows and stuff. I mean, it looks like they're cooking supper in there so it's raining and I don't even think we own an umbrella I think I did <laughs> but I don't know where it's it like, is. yeah it's like it blew away we used it we used it to we for shade one, one day and when we got this truck we, that's right we got an umbrella when we bought this truck so but it ain't in the truck but it ain't in the truck so this lady's smart she has an umbrella she must not be from Arizona good luck babe Hi, babe. It's like a museum in there. Yeah? Yeah, I got lots of uh, tourists. Lots of information on Paducah, Kentucky? Well, in Kentucky, in Louisville, and distillery map. Sweet. Uh, Kentucky Bourbon Trail, Lexington. Should be on the bucket list I mean, there. This is White Haven here, isn't it? Yeah, that's where we're at. Okay. Yeah, I ran in there too, and I picked you a, a flower from the flower department in there. So now what do you want to do? Go to Louisville? Head this way? Yeah. Okay. This is the White Haven rest area in Paducah, Kentucky. So what was the place originally? I'm trying to read on that, but it says on May 21st, 1908, Whitehaven and 57 acres were purchased by James P. Smith, who at the time was mayor of Paducah and a prosperous merchant as a wholesale grocer. Wow. At that time, it was purchased for the sum of $7,000 cash. According to the deed books, Whitehaven was then described as being located three miles from the city of Paducah and was located on... Laceville, Love Laceville, Gravel Road. Shortly after moving into the home, the Smiths renamed the residence Bida Wee. Mrs. Smith was of Scottish heritage and Bida Wee translates into English to come rest a while. Rest area. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, super cool. It is raining really hard, you guys. I'm not lagging it. So we're thinking that we are just getting into the back end of the cell. Uh-huh. I like to get to the other side of the cell. Yeah, I don't like this at all. Look at that. It's alright. See that guy's going way faster than me. He shouldn't be going fast like that. You can hardly see. Road. Yeah, I want to pull over. Oh my goodness. We're slowing up a bit. We're going 60. I like it. All right, I can see the. I can clearly see the whole top of that SUV there. 
see the oh, bottom. See, he's got his blinker on. <laughs> That was a good guide vehicle there. Now he's going to get off the road. Hey! Frick. Cool when it does that, huh? Yeah, it is. We might stop in here soon. There's a truck stop in 13 minutes, miles, minutes, something like that. Now, you probably can't hear me at all, so maybe... There's a truck stop 13 minutes where <laughs> <laughs> you weren't fast enough then. I don't know. So there's a truck stop in 13 minutes that we, I'm going to make him stop at if he can see the exit. It's just going to rain like this all day though. If we get to the other side of it, we got a better chance of uh, you know, being able to look out the window and see anything other than rain hitting the ground. But, but how exciting is this, Crystal? It's raining. That's what we wanted. We wanted to move somewhere where it rains. I drove you somewhere and now you're complaining about it again. I'm complaining about driving on the freeway in a flash flood. This would be flash flood warning advisory. Yeah. <laughs> Oops, lightning. In Arizona. All right. Oh, yeah. No, we wouldn't be going anywhere in Arizona. Like no. All right. So this is what we're dealing with. We are right here in that nastiness. And there's something I want to see and I want to show you guys in about a half an hour. I've never been there before and I'm excited about it. And I'd like to get to the other side of this rain, you know, to where I can get on the gas and go 80 miles an hour for 20 minutes or so and at least be able to hop out and show you, you know, for 30 seconds before the rain catches us. But it doesn't look like that's going to happen. That's some bright lightning, huh? Nothing I can really do about it now with this all this person in front of us. With their hazard lights on. Proceed on as the the uh, sundial said back there, right? Proceeding on. Alright, it's just been a couple minutes and you can see the other side of the storm here. The worst is behind us. Alright guys, so this is where this was my next schedule hangouts uh, stop today, but it is raining. It's sprinkling right now, and there is big rain coming behind me. But this is the Kentucky Dam land between the lakes, and it is off to the right here. And it is where the it's either the Cumberland or the Tennessee. It's both of them, but I'm not sure which one we're looking at here at the moment. Oh, I hope you guys can see it. That's huge. That yep. Oh, there it goes. And the road is open. Oh man, we're gonna go over the dam itself, I think. Yeah, we gotta get one of these umbrella things that everybody has, Chris. I think it's probably a good idea. Probably worth the investment. Right. I cannot believe how big that body of water is. Straight ahead, that road is on top of the dam, and it pours down in down there. That's the Tennessee River dumping out, and that is Kentucky Lake out there. And you can't see across it. I don't know if you can in clear skies, but look at how big that is, huh? It is huge. This gives me an opportunity to say something that I haven't gotten to say in a very long time. It just got rained out. <laughs> we have not been able to say that forever. <laughs> I wish you guys could see that better. It is gargantuan. I wish I could see it better. I know, me too. I just can't believe the size of that body of water. There's folks fishing down here in the river. Wow. It's 
Yeah, this is... The watchtowers? Well, we're, you know, whatever they do. We're going over the dam right now. I didn't see anybody sitting in them chairs. So, here's the power plant. So of course, dams generate power. So, it's a one way. Hey, that's neat. So this must be one of the turbines or the water flowing through the dam turns all those things. Generating power. That is a big old dam. Sure is. Welcome to Kentucky Dam. The Tennessee Valley Authority serves the people of the valley by managing the thriving Tennessee River system to provide multiple ben benefits including navigation, flood control, power production, and recreation. The TVA provides a stable water supply to cities and industries as well as suitable habitat for fish and game. Managing the system ensures our region will have a safe and healthy, beautiful place to live and play for years to come. I like the sound of that. Very I want well a beautiful written. place to live and play for years to come. In Arkansas. In Arkansas. You have to say Kentucky is really beautiful. Though. Yeah, I mean, this is why we came this direction. Like, we wanted to explore more of Kentucky. This place is pretty cool. And possibly there's something up our sleeve. Who knows? Maybe. Got to bring me back here when we can actually see it. Yeah, one day. So here's uh, the rain coming in across the... Kentucky it looks like an ocean out there, like this could be Florida. So here is another view of Kentucky Dam where the Tennessee River dumps into the Ohio. I do believe the Ohio is about half a mile, a mile down the street. Check that out, huh? It's big. Whatever water is going through that is coming out of the deep surface to create those water. There's another fisherman. They are great. Look at these two big danger, danger, danger signs. <laughs> Chattanooga. Okay, now it looks like this one's called Barkley Dam, and this is where the Cumberland River um, goes over the dam in just a mile or two or four, I don't know, down a river dumps into the Ohio. The land between the lakes, the Cumberland River and the Tennessee River, the lakes are made by these dams, and look at that. That, that is the Cumberland. That's that, Aben. Eh, Sad. I wanted to spend a couple hours here at least, but, but we got rained out, so.
outside of Louisville, Kentucky, and I have a confession. The reason we are going on this trip Hey guys, we are at the Nationals here at the Expo Center in Kentucky. 